Dr. T. Case Study, Spinal Stenosis. My client is Dr. T. He's an 83-year-old pathologist with a diagnosis of spinal stenosis, spinal fusion, and laminectomy of C3 to C7. He has been an inpatient at the SNF for eight weeks. He has been assessed for self-feeding and recommendations have been made, including the use of modified utensils. Dr. T struggles with grasping utensils and he doesn't have enough strength to bring the utensil completely to his mouth. And he continues, and as he continues, fatigue sets in. Difficulty to lift the utensil in food and bring it to his mouth becomes frustrating, which makes fatigue not only physical, but also mental. He struggles with getting the food onto the fork, and it sometimes falls off as well. Adaptive tableware is used to help him with feeding. Utensils with wider handles make them easier to grasp, and he can stabilize his hand better without having to make any adjustments to his grasp while lifting and placing food into his mouth because the curve at the end of the utensil. Feeding. Dr. T makes good use of his left hand by bringing it to his right arm and directing and guiding it as he lifts food to his mouth. Fatigue could lead him to not being able to eat the entire meal without having to take a break in between. Spinal stenosis is a condition where spaces in the spinal column narrow, which leads to the compression of the spinal cord. This is a gradual progression that can happen anywhere along the spine. Other names for spinal stenosis include cytoclaudication, central spinal stenosis, and foraminal spinal stenosis. If the narrowing is minimal, there will be no symptoms that take place. However, if too much narrowing, it could compress the nerves and cause problems. The symptoms of spinal stenosis usually progress over time as the nerves become more compressed. If you are with spinal stenosis, you could experience leg or arm weakness, lower back pain during standing or, or walking, numbness in your legs or buttocks, and balance problems. While sitting down in a chair, it can help to relieve these symptoms. Unfortunately, these symptoms could return while standing or walking. Aging. Aging is the most common cause of spinal stenosis. As you age, the tissues in your spine can begin to thicken and bones can grow larger, which would lead to the nerves being compressed. There are certain health conditions that could contribute to spinal stenosis. Osteoarthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, scoliosis, achondroplasia, Paget's disease of the bone, ossification of the posterior longitudinal ligament, Ankylosing, spondylitis, spinal injuries, and spinal tumors are all conditions that can contribute to spinal stenosis. Treatment. The treatment options for spinal stenosis could include medication prescribed by a doctor, cortisone injections into your spinal column that could reduce swelling and non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, may help to ease pain. Physical therapy could be recommended to help strengthen and stretch your muscles. With severe pain or weakness, surgery may be required or recommended. It may also be recommended if the condition is affecting the ability to walk, control, or the bowel or bladder or to do other routine activities. <laughs> Treatment continued. There are several types of surgery used to treat spinal stenosis, including laminectomy, foraminotomy, and spinal fusion. Other ways to cope with spinal stenosis would be home remedies, 
or complementary therapies such as heat therapy, cold therapy, stretching, and strengthening exercises, acupuncture, and massage. The long-term outlook for people with spinal stenosis is good in the way that many people with it lead full and active lives. In order to help manage the symptoms of spinal stenosis, adjustments to the exercise routine or other day-to-day -day activities may be necessary. Com cor comorbidities. Spinal stenosis is one of the most commonly diagnosed pathologies of the lumbar spine and the leading indication for spine surgery among adults aged 65 years and older. Despite this, the burden of lumbar spinal stenosis by itself and in combination with common cor comor comorbidities on health-related quality of life is not known as our comorbidities. Specifically related to this chronic condition. To estimate the illness burden of LSS on HRQL, adjusting for the effects of specific com comorbidities, age and gender, and investigate whether specific comorbidities are related to the condition. Diagnosed LSS is related to a very large amount of burden of illness that is compounded by relative co comorbidities with implications for clinical care, healthcare policy decisions, and research. Attention to co comorbidities is particularly significant in LSS. Symptoms. Although a portion of people may not experience symptoms, those that do could have pain, numbness, muscle weakness, and tingling in the neck and or back. The majority of people that get spinal stenosis are over the age 50. Younger people could develop it if they have certain diseases, get injured, or are born with a narrower than usual spine. Stenosis normally takes place in the cervical region of the spine close to the head, neck, or in the lumbar region in the lower back. Symptoms of spinal stenosis in the lower back could include lower back pain, pain or aching which spreads down your back into your legs, which feels worse while standing or walking and better while you lean forward, cramping, numbness or tingling in your feet and legs, muscle weakness in the feet and legs. Symptoms of spinal stenosis in the neck could include neck pain, Tingling or numbness in your arms and hands. Weakness in your arms and hands. Tests. Tests a doctor might give in order to confirm the diagnosis may include x-rays. An x-ray of your back may show bone changes that can be narrowing the spaces in the spinal canal. Magnetic resonance imaging, MRI. An MRI creates a cross-sectional image of your spine that may detect where nerves in the spinal cord are under pressure. It may also reveal any damage to discs and ligaments. Computed tomography, CT scan. If you can't get an MRI, a CT scan could also create images of your spine. It combines x-ray images taken at different angles to produce a cross-sectional picture of your spine. Unfortunately, there isn't a cure for spinal stenosis. The symptoms tend to begin slowly and get worse over time. The good news is there are steps that you can take to manage spinal stenosis such as exercising on a regular basis and taking over the counter pain relievers or over the counter pain relievers. In rare cases, severe spinal stenosis that's left untreated can progress and cause permanent weakness, numbness, balance issues, paralysis, and incontinence. Interventions. Dr. T has trouble with strength and endurance. So for interventions, I would recommend strength exercises and walking or using an elliptical. If walking or the elliptical is too much, he could do aquatic exercises to lower any tension or pressure upon the spine. He should also do some stretching to reduce stress upon the joints he could get 
massages to help improve his range of motion, heat therapy to improve blood circulation to the muscles and soft tissues, cold or ice therapy to help relieve pain. Some education would be good to improve and maintain posture. Proper lifting, pushing, and pulling would be good would be some good exercises to help gain strength. For any exercise that might place strain or stress upon the back, like going for walks or doing yard work, he should plan ahead to take breaks to prevent doing too much. For short-term goals, he's going to want to improve his ability to eat and gain endurance. His long-term goal would be to get back to living as good as he possibly can, so getting into better shape and gaining as much strength as possible would be great long-term goals to focus on. Interventions continued. Anytime something in life changes and someone can't function the way they used to be able to, it will be difficult it will be a difficult adjustment to make, so maintaining a good attitude and positivity will be essential in making progress and getting back to the lifestyle that they are used to. And those are my references. Thank you very much.